One, two, one, two. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's live stream. It's 3 p.m. UK time. Um, let me know where you're watching from and who we've got already. I can see we have a few people here. We have Tracy in the house. Looking forward to this. Kathleen is here. Teddy from Texas. Nomadic Blue is here. Tim from Texas, too. And N Holloway from Augusta, Georgia, I believe that is. Um, thank you for joining me today. Uh, let me just share my screen here, and we will be getting started momentarily. So today we're going to do a design live stream. Um, past few weeks we've done streams with uh, Ian Barnard last week. We did focus on hand lettering. And uh, yeah, that really inspired me. I thought, let's do one this week. I've got a design that I'd like to create. I think it would be fun and helpful and uh, hopefully educational to take you through my process of coming up with a with an idea and then turning it into a finished design. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. Who else have we got here? We got Mike from Canada. Um, bear with me one second. Mike from Canada's here. Um Asma from the UK is here. Tracy from Australia. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Beth from Pittsburgh. Uh, Sade from South Carolina. Lovely to have you here. Um, Teddy says, I'm huge in Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas, right? That's what they say. Um, so, uh, yeah, this, this is what we're going to do. If you're new here or you, you, know, you want to know what the plan is, um, do like and subscribe. That would be great. Uh, give the algorithm some love. Um, Ask questions as we go. Um, I will be taking questions. I'll be keeping an eye on the comments as I go through my process here. So if you want to know, you know, what brush are you using? What's this? What's that? Or you've got a question about, you know, wider print on demand or uh, coming up with ideas or anything like that, uh, feel free to ask in the comments. I am an open book here for about an hour or so, however long will uh, it takes us to get through this design. Victoria from Reading, uh, Lisa from Toronto, and Dusika from Serbia. Lovely stuff. Dave from Minnesota. Lance is here from Florida. Mike from Kansas. Wonderful, wonderful. So yeah, ask your questions as we go. Um, if you want goodies and freebies from me, michaelessig.com forward slash live is down there in that corner. You can see the, the uh, URL, the link there. Um, Loads of free resources there. So if you're new and you want to kind of dive in the deep end and uh, get introduced to, to some of my my methods, some of my tips and tricks, then michaelessig.com forward slash live is where you want to go. Um, do follow me on Instagram as well. I'm on Instagram, Michael Lessig. I'm there. You can see me here on Instagram posting designs, posting stuff, works in progress. This is what we're going to work on today. A little sneaky peek there. So do go ahead and follow me on Instagram if you aren't already. And the brushes I'm using today are Ian Barnard's, the same as last week, his freestyler brush set. Um, you can find these on his website, or if you just go to michaelessig.com forward slash Ian, you can find them via that link as well. Okay, um, I think that's all the housekeeping done. We've got Livia from the Netherlands, um, uh, Jeanette from South Carolina, and uh, Seanade. Sean Aid from Toronto, Nancy from Canada. Uh, Tracy says, can you let us know along the way what keywords would you use to sell it as well so we can get the ideas? Um, yeah, we can talk about keywords as we go. Maybe drop me a reminder once we kind of uh, get into the completion of the design. Um, and uh, yeah, we can definitely talk about that, Tracy. Okay. Um, all right. Without further ado, I believe we... Uh, uh, we have a nice little crowd here beginning to gather, so I think we can get started. Um, just as a way of introduction, if you are joining me for the first time or you're watching this replay and you're not sure what it's all about, my name is Michael Essek. I'm a t-shirt designer, and I've been designing and selling and licensing t-shirts and my designs on t-shirts primarily for about seven or eight years, and it's a full-time income. It's a, a business that's grown. I employ a uh, few of my family to work in the business for me. And uh, it's really a great business to be in. It's uh, it's fun. You get to create your own ideas, turn them into great designs. And then there's so many opportunities to make money from your art these days online. My primary income source is print-on-demand sites like Redbubble and uh, Merch by Amazon or through marketplaces like Etsy. But we also license our art in brick-and-mortar stores and different places like that. So so if you're an artist and designer, you're looking to make um, money and income from your work, 
then uh, then this is for you. And in this particular video, what I'm gonna do is dive into my design process. I've got a pretty simple idea that I'm gonna turn into a finished design. You can watch me do that today in Procreate. And uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So uh, Nancy is here from Canada. Not sure if I said hello to you already, Nancy, but welcome. Um, so that's the plan for today and we will get started here right away. So um, oh, a couple of questions, Victoria, Michael, can you say who makes your t-shirts, please? Um, uh, it's a complicated question in a funny way, Victoria. If you mean who is the, uh, the manufacturer of the fabric of the actual blank t-shirt, um, it really depends. So I license my art to websites like Redbubble and Merch by Amazon and others, and they all have different t-shirt manufacturers and blanks that they'd work with. So I don't actually manufacture or print my own t-shirts. I don't see the t-shirts that I make money from. I just upload the artwork. So I can tell you that probably the most popular t-shirts are the Bella and Canvas right now. That's probably what, um, if you buy a t-shirt from Redbubble, that's what you're likely to receive. Um, but yeah, there's, there's Bella and Canvas, there's Gildan, there's Next Level. There's a few different brands out there. So um, Bella and Canvas, probably the most popular one, if that's what the question was about. Um, Heather says, hello, um, from Leeds, scarving from a job. Um, we don't condone that kind of activity, but it's okay. Uh, Beth says, can you speak to the art requirements for POD in particular? Can you use transparency to adjust colors and brushes? Um, so Beth, I, in terms of the the specifics of an art file for, for Redbubble, um, you can upload almost anything, but what I do is I use the Merch by Amazon template, which is five, 400 high by four, 500 wide pixels. And uh, obviously it has a transparent background. You would be exporting a PNG file from Photoshop or from whatever you're using from Procreate, if you're using Procreate. Uh, and as far as transparency goes, it is not advisable to use transparency, which is to say everything in your design should be a solid block color it should not you should not have um you know things that you want to be letting a bit of the t-shirt come through if you like so everything should be what is that opacity zero or opacity 100 i can't remember which one it is um but it should not be transparent in any way it should be a solid line of color um so that's the way to think about it if you're not um familiar with like screen printing on t-shirts that's the kind of background I came from, and that's the way to think about it, in my opinion. If you think of your, if you think as though you're designing for a screen print, and if you understand that process, it might be helpful to just go and watch a few videos on how that's done. But basically, it's like a, like a mask or something on Photoshop. It's a solid screen, and then little bits of it are cut out to let the ink come through. So every, if you think about it this way, every pixel on the canvas is either black or transparent you know there's no in between it's like a mask on photoshop so it's going to let anything come through that's there and hopefully that makes sense but yeah uh that's uh just a kind of a, a way to say go and check it out go and kind of learn a little bit about screen printing that will set you in the right frame of mind even though we're not screen printing to create artwork that really works well for for print on demand as well okay um carlos from vancouver is here hello to you um, Amira from Georgia is here. A uh, question before we dive in from Nomadic. If you designed an RGB by mistake, can you convert an image to CMYK before printing done via Procreate? Yes, you can, um, but I upload an RGB and don't have a problem with that. And I think it only becomes an issue if you're really picky about the particular colors you're going to get, uh, which is not a great position to be in with print on demand because you don't have a lot of control over the color quality and, and stuff like that. Um, but just to say, I design an RGB most of the time. It's not a big deal either way. Your artwork is going to be converted, you know, before it's printed. And it, yeah, I've, I've never come across an issue where the colors have, have caught me out or anything like that particularly. Ugar is here. Hello to you, Ugar. Wonderful to see you. Hope you are well, my friend, in London. Um, hope it's all going well for you down there. Old Hag from northern Sweden has caught me live. Wonderful. Okay, from Jordan as well, we have Aziz. Aziz is here, wonderful. Okay, great, so let's dive into this today. I'm gonna to talk you through, first of all, my, um, my kind of concept and where this idea came from, and then we'll dive into it. So um, as you probably know, what are we in September now? It's middle of September. Um, a few, uh, oh, thank you, Hugo. Hugo says, thanks. <laughs> Good to see you, mate, like the beard. Thank you very much, Hugo, that's my, 
lockdown beard that's still there. Um, so we're coming up to Halloween. That's one of the big, um, one of the first big, you know, quarter four uh, gift, n not necessarily gift, but certainly seasons where people are looking for funny T-shirts. They're going to Halloween parties. So Halloween is one of the big kind of trends that comes up every year. Um, I like doing Halloween designs. I don't know. There's a lot of material to work with. It's like Christmas, you know. I when I was a kid in school, whenever Christmas was coming around, I was always doodling. And I knew that when Christmas was coming, you know, we'd get to do like Christmas cards and stuff. And I like, you know, you get to draw fun stuff. You get to draw penguins and polar bears. Good song by uh, Swedish punk rock band Mill and Colin. Uh, snowmen, you know, elves, lots of fun stuff to draw. Same with Halloween. So it's a fun, um, a fun season, a fun topic to be designing around. Anyway, I wanted to come up with some original Halloween ideas. I wanted to come up with some funny phrases, some jokes that I could turn into original designs. So. Here's where I started. I have, um, for those of you uh, unfamiliar, I have a, a course called the Ideas Workshop. And uh, part of it, we have uh, software we've been working on that helps you generate original ideas. And what this does is this is a big list of what I call plug-in phrases. So this is a big list of phrases which are really good for adapting to come up with original ideas. So they're like adaptable phrases, like fill-in-the-blank type stuff. So I have a list here of about 300, and um, this is really great. It's really helpful anytime you want to come up with some ideas. So you can just type like Halloween up here, and it will replace the blank with the word Halloween. And you can scroll down and, and see ideas like Halloween till I die or Halloween all day or, or whatever, Halloween forever. Some short ones, some long phrases, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, so the way I typically work with an idea like this, I would I would sit down trying to think about some words or topics around the subject. So not necessarily putting in the word Halloween, although of course you can try that and see if anything comes up, but what are some topics or things that would be fun to draw or that are related to Halloween? So, you know, you could do things like ghost or um, last week we did one with, um, with Ian Barnard that was around pumpkins. We did uh, peace, love and pumpkins, which is one I found this way. Um, and for this one, um, I wanted to do something, oh, I thought about bats. So, you know, what can we do around bats? Uh, put in bats here. You can scroll down. You can see, like, uh, bats all the way, bats, bats hard, uh, bats are my co-pilot, bats are my spirit animal, and so on and so forth. Now, hopefully you get the idea here, but as you can see here, we got, like, 300 phrases. That's quite a lot to scroll through and to find good ideas you know, so it takes a little while. So one thing we've been working on uh, recently is this cool little tool, which allows you to put in a word here. And then what it's going to do is pull out phrases where there's alliteration between the word you put in and the phrase. So things like um, bat brothers or baby it's bats outside or behold the bats or best bats ever. Hopefully you can see these on your screen. Make this a little bit bigger. Uh, born to bats, blood, sweat, and bats. So lots of bees. So that's what this this tool does. This is not live yet in the software, but this is one of the things we're working on behind the scenes. Um, and one, I was scrolling down this list. I was using this to come up with some ideas. This is how I came up with the idea from last week as well, peace, love, and pumpkins. Um, so I was scrolling down this list, and then I saw this one that jumped out at me. Um, I like big bats, and I cannot lie. So this one obviously works in a couple of ways, um, there's obviously alliteration there, but it's also almost a rhyme and replace idea. You know, it's a replacement uh, pun. I like big butts. I like big bats. So um, shout out to Sir Mix-a-Lot for this wonderful lyric that is so adaptable uh, for great ideas. But I think this one is funny. You know, it's nice. It's, uh, it's likely to appeal to a pretty broad range of people. It's also, you know, it works for Halloween, but it could also work for just bat lovers in general or anything like that. So this is the idea we're going to work on. So uh, before I turn this into a design and show you my process, a couple of questions have come in here, I believe. Um, Old Hag says, I can take selfies for Halloween, scariest designs ever. Yeah, not sure how well that would do, to be honest. No no offense to you, of course. But uh, Tim and Franisha say, "Have you? do you have multiple Etsy stores? Um do you have multiple Etsy stores or recommend one for that? I guess the question is, would you have multiple or just one? Um, 
It really depends. We, we have multiple Etsy stores uh, for different brands and they are specific brands where it makes sense. Um, you know, you could go the general approach. That's fine. I find um, for, for my business, we have, you know, little kind of brands which really work together and we try and keep those Etsy stores for that. So hope that helps. Beverly says hi from Florida. Um, Anne Holloway's here. Yes, we know. Stephanie from Maryland. Good, good, good. Bo's here as well. Okay. So uh, this is my idea. I like big bats and I cannot lie. So um, that's the phrase. Um, I thought that was a great idea. Let's see what we can do with it. So um, first thing I did was actually start thinking about the process of how I'm going to turn this into a design. How am, how am I going to lay it out? And in particular, I started thinking about um, how, how am I going to draw this, um, this bat? What's it going to look like? And um, let me share my screen with you here. I'll share my iPad. So I'm working in uh, Procreate here on the on the iPad, and this is kind of the um, hopefully you can see this. It's kind of the concept that I've got so far. But what I thought I'd do is just kind of quickly run you through the time lapse video, and you can see exactly how I got to this this stage. So um, if I fire this up. So you can see here, I started doing, this is gonna run through really fast, but I started sketching you know, some different bats in different positions. I'm trying to think about the best way to do it. Should it be cartoony? Should it be more serious? And then I started turning to the layout and thinking about you know, the most recognizable position of a bat, what it might look like. And then I kind of settled on this idea that we'd have the arms outstretched. That would be the best way to do it. And, um, and emphasize the words like this. So big emphasis on the on the kind of joke on the big bats section, and then um, the kind of the rest of the text fitting in around there. And then I've this is moving really fast, but you can see this is my kind of line work on the on the bat. So I'm just going in there and doing some some detail, uh, just kind of mixing it up a little bit, and uh, yeah, giving it a bit of shading, a bit of light and dark, and using, of course, um, Ian and Stefan's letter builders to build out these letters in the first place. And uh, and yeah, that's how we got to this. So not a finished design, but you know, it's kind of getting there. We've got a kind of layout that we can work with. Ilka says, hi, Michael. Where can I find this new section in your app? Ilka, it's not there yet. Um, this is a, a new feature that we're working on behind the scenes, but it will be it will be launching out within the, the next month or so. So, uh, so yeah, keep your eyes peeled. I will, of course, let you know. If you're in the Ideas Workshop, You don't worry, you, you won't miss it. I'll, I'll make sure we tell you all about it. Uh, Bo says, nice illustration. Thank you. Yeah, so let me just talk a little bit about this you know, how we've got to this place so far. So obviously there's a few considerations here. Um, Halloween design, you know, one of the first things you might be thinking is should I, you know, am I going to go for kind of a Halloween focus thing? Is it going to be on a black background and all those kind of things? Um, and then you might be tempted to kind of, you know, make that will inform kind of the fonts you use. Maybe I'll use kind of scary fonts and that kind of thing, which is fine, of course. Um, and would be fine for a design like this. What I've tried to do is keep it a little bit um, uh, not too kind of Halloween focused because I want to make a design that can be used all year round, if you like, or for people who are into bats. Like this is a funny joke. This is going to appeal to people who are into bats. I mean, they could be could be scientists. They could be biologists. I don't know you know, who's into bats, but I'm sure there's plenty of people around the world who study bats or are interested in bats or just like them in the same way that people like any other animal. Um, so, so yeah, um, I've tried to make my design not too kind of Halloween-y, so I'm not going for like blood and gore and type of stuff. I'm just going for like a, a fairly generic illustration. Um, so um, let me just talk a little bit as well about the, the illustration itself, because as you could see in my time-lapse, um, I started out doing these kind of, you know, wondering whether to do a more cartoony approach like these guys here, you know, whether this would be better. And then I kind of settled on, you know, not a realistic kind of sketch, but more of a kind of somewhere between the two, which is often where I end up. And what it, it works well for T-shirts. Um, you know, sometimes if you're doing a really realistic sketch, it can be a bit too detailed. It can, you know, be overkill for, for the T-shirt medium. If you go too simplified and too cartoony, it can sometimes just be a bit too, you know, 
not amateurish, but perhaps a bit childish, and maybe you lose a little of the edge of the joke if you do that. So I've kind of settled here for something in between the two. And then in terms of illustration style, we have got, you can see, this is basically just, just line work. You know, we don't, we just have, um, you know, just blue lines on a white background. So um, there's really nothing um, else going on here. I'm, and I'm going to keep this design intentionally simple. In fact, we're probably just going to do like, like white on black, I think, um, for this design. And I think that'll work fine. Um, I usually like to use a color, at least one color, maybe two or three colors. Um, but for this design, I think it will work, work out fine. So a few considerations there. Let me take a few of your questions and comments that have come in on this. Um, so Lance says, for those folks using designers, do you think that it's worth looking for lettering specialists to work on the lettering portion of the design? Um, it's a good question, Lance. Um, I think that in my experience, that's probably going to be pretty difficult. But I mean, if you have the ability to do that, then yes, you know, if you're looking for the best results, I do think there's a lot to be gained by, you know, doing hand lettering. I think there's a lot there that, that you know, it brings... Uh, certain human touch to the design. It, it makes things more custom. It makes things more personalized. It makes it so that it's harder for people to copy it in, in many ways. So, so yeah, I think um, if you can, that would be the best result. The question is, you know, can you really get a hand lettering specialist and a designer and produce designs um, for a price that's then going to, you know, be economical and, and come out profitable at the other side? that's to be decided, but that depends on your circumstances. So, so I'll leave that one there. Kathleen says, beautiful, great to see the process, but what happened to the S? Yes, don't worry, Kathleen, I have noticed that and we will be fixing it. Um, Heather says, uh, did you take bat inspo from other sources or did you just draw the bat off the top of your head? No, no, I certainly did not draw the bat off the top of my head. I wish I, I could do that. No, while I was drawing these, I, I pulled up Google images, I did a search for, for bats or bat illustration, or um, when I was thinking I might do a cartoony one, I did, I did search for like bat cartoon um, to find some reference images. So, um, so yeah, I always work from reference images. Um, what I haven't done, as you can see here, I didn't, you know, some people might be tempted to like find a photo of a bat and then kind of trace it. Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. I've done that a lot in the past, but I do think if, if you can, and as illustrators, you should be able to, um, you should illustrate your own thing from reference images, if that makes sense. Like it's not the best approach to take a photo and trace over it. Um, that can lend, lend uh, can land you in legal trouble. Um, and I think it's better to, to kind of, you know, use images for references, but then try and draw your own, your own version. Um, obviously depends where you're at in terms of illustration, but, um, but yeah, um, I, I can kind of produce, like, this is not an accurate bat, of course. This is, you know, if we had a bat expert here, they'd be like, oh, that's not a real bat. You know, the body's too small. The ears are too big. The wings wouldn't be that big on, you know, but that's not what we're going for. We're going for a bat that's going to look like a bat on a t-shirt for a funny t-shirt design. All it needs to do is communicate, you know, bat. Um, so, you know, you could, you could have done a silhouette of a bat here. You could have done a cartoon. You could have done a super realistic. There's lots of different approaches. Um, but this is the one that I think is nice for a few reasons. It allows us to do original illustration. Um, you know, it's not too complicated. It's not too, um, um, overly detailed. And at the same time, it's not too simple. So it's kind of finding that sweet spot, you know, it's not, uh, super simple so anyone can copy it, but it's not super complex that it's not going to work on a T-shirt. So, uh, Tracy, can we fit the S on there? Yes, don't worry about it. <laughs> I've got it covered. Tim uh, and Franisha, do you mostly design to fit more in a rectangular shape for a T-shirt or prefer closer to a square? Uh, it really depends on the design. Like, you know, this is, if you see the, the kind of canvas here, the white box, that is the canvas, that is the principal area of a T-shirt design. So, if you want to, you can fill that design. You can fill that space. That will be a big, you know, that will be a pretty big print on the shirt. But, you know, if you know what you're doing and, and it works, then fine. Um, typically, I wouldn't fill the canvas. You know, I wouldn't, I don't mean fill as in completely fill it with color, but I mean, you know, I wouldn't fill out that rectangular shape. I would usually do something more like this kind of, um, 
yeah, kind of a squ more square type of shape or something like that. Um, so yeah, hope that helps. But it depends on the design. Like you could have taken this idea and filled the full canvas, you know, if you wanted to. Um, it really, it's really a matter of uh, personal choice, and then you know what works best for a for a shirt. Okay, so uh, this is my kind of sketch so far. I've actually um, done a few things to speed things up here because we're already 25 minutes. So uh, it seems like I did the right thing. So what I did was I actually, um, in that initial sketch that you can see here, this is the original one in Procreate. This is actually not, um, this was not full size canvas. This was a, a smaller canvas size than it should be. Now this one is the correct size. So what happens was I realized that about halfway through, I exported my uh, my sketch, my bat sketch, and I vectorized it um, over on the computer using a app called Image Vectorizer on the Mac. Um, so what that did was basically take my sketch and um, obviously you can't really see because Procreate's a a raster app anyway, but what it did was vectorize it. And then I imported that back in. So this is, there's no loss of quality now. Now I've got a nice clean illustration um, to work from at the right canvas size. So hope that helps um, explain that process. And then also for the sake of time, I have already done my, uh, as you can see here, my lettering um, grid. So right here, you can see this is the this is using Ian's and Stefan's uh, letter builder, so I've gone through and uh, created enough letter templates for each of my letters, and then I drew over it. This is kind of my rough sketch for the text of what you know the kind of shape that's going to be. So that's where we're up to now. So um, what I'm going to do is finalize this lettering, and then we're going to take it to the next level. A um, few questions, comments. Doo, 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 doo. Uh, Scott says, wouldn't the whole design be moved up the canvas? Yeah, this is just where it is as I'm working on it. Um, typically, what I'd do is wait until the design is finished before I moved it up the canvas and positioned it for export. So this is just, yeah, this is not the way, the position of it, <laughs> of how it would be in the final file. This is just um, me working on it. Um I can see a few people helping out Bazit. That's cool. Myrna says, what is the name of the vectorizer? It's called Image Vectorizer. Image Vectorizer. Two, two words, and um, I'll type it in the comments. Image Vectorizer. I think it's with a Z. Is it with a Z? Yeah. I think it's like $5 or something on the Mac App Store. So, um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, Go ahead and uh, check that out. Um, so yeah, uh, that's answered a few people's questions. Okay, great. So um, let's do the lettering, I think, will be the first thing to do. So I've used, um, for the I like, you can see up here, I don't know whether you watched uh, last week's, but I used the rock and roller brush um, from Ian's Freestyler brush set. And by the way, um, this whole design, everything from the, the line work, um, the lettering, everything is done with, with Ian's freestyler brush set. Um, so yeah, I've used his rock and roller to do the I like, which will tidy up here in a second. Um, and then what we'll do now is we will finalize this big bats uh, text. So I'm gonna drop down the uh, the thing, and we can probably lose the grid, actually. We probably don't need the grid there now. And then I can come in here and pick a, a nice, neat, um, let's maybe use the sloppy Joe detail one to do our kind of final uh, line work on the lettering. Uh, Mission says, is it possible to sketch directly into the Vectinator app. Um, I recognize the name Vectinator, but I can't remember the last time I've used it or if I'm familiar with it, but um, yeah, I'm not sure. You would have to, uh, you'd have to consult someone who's familiar with that app, I'm afraid. So um, we're gonna do the lettering and just kind of tidy this up a bit. 
as you can see, it's a bit scruffy. So um, what I want to do is just kind of come in here and do the final line work and just make it look, I might make this a bit bigger, make it look nice and neat and tidy um, for our final design. And of course, you know, there's, this isn't going to be super neat. It's not going to look like it was, you know, a font or anything, but the idea is we get it neat enough to be readable, but we get a nice bit of kind of personalized, um, uh, personalization, you know, it looks hand drawn. It looks like a human being has given some attention to it. Um, and that's kind of what we're going for. We want that kind of, you know, a little bit of love baked into the, to the design, which is what you can get when you do a little bit of hand lettering like this. Um, Lance says, please explain again, when you use a large Procreate canvas, do you still need to vectorize the graphic? No. Um, yeah, let me clarify there, Lance. Um, I was wrong when I said that that canvas, the, the previous one over here, was the correct mode size. It wasn't. It was much smaller. It was kind of the default Procreate size or whatever my screen size is. So what you want to do is, ideally, what I would have done is worked originally from the uh, the correct size, which would have been the merch size, which is what I'm on now, but I didn't. So um, because of that, that's why I had to vectorize it. If it wasn't for that, if I had started on the right, you know, canvas size in the first place, there would have been no need to vectorize anything. Um, I just did that just because I didn't want to lose any quality uh, when it came to the came to the design. So hope that makes sense. Um, Okay, so we've got Big B, and let's uh, whoa, let's try and neaten this up a little bit here. Big bats. Obviously, if you've got more time, you can, you know, spend a bit more time tidying this up. Um, but for the sake of time, I'm going to go a little bit faster than maybe you would want to in a real, real world environment. Uh, see, we got a comment here. Uh, Sade. PODs, if you use API store integration, like Printify, require your customer to pay you. You pay the POD with your card info. Better make sure funds are in your account to start order production. It can be confusing. I would like Michael to hopefully talk a little bit more about the different POD providers and store management processes. Um, Sade, if you go to my website, I have a very big, very detailed blog post on uh, Printful versus Printify, um, various different fulfillment companies covered there. So if that's what you're you're looking for, then go and check that out. Um, doesn't make for much of a fun video <laughs> talking about the different print on demand providers. Um, certainly not on a live stream like this. But um, but yeah, go and check that out. MichaelEssig.com. You'll find a lot of uh, you find a big article there on the best print on demand fulfillment companies. Um, so yeah. Check that out yourself. Okay. Um, I think this will kind of do the job. I think I might just, let's knock out the background and let's uh, do a little bit of selecting here. We're going to freehand this because I think this S is leaving a little bit of dead space. I might just try and rotate it a little bit, maybe make it a bit bigger just to kind of fill that space. And then perhaps also, I think we probably could do with a little bit more breathing room between bats and big. So something like that. 
just to make it a little bit more obvious. In fact, even a bit more, I think. Uh, here we go. Um, okay. All right. So we've got our text. Let's do um, let's do the same thing, but let's do it a lot quicker up here for I like. And I think uh, what we'll do here is knock this opacity down a little bit. And I think what we'll do is just kind of really do a quick In fact, we can make this even a bit neater still. And hmm. yeah, that'll do. It's got some personality to it. It's not the neatest and tidiest looking K in the world, but it certainly got a bit of personality. Oh no, um, why did that not work? Because we have a reference layer still on here. Turn that one off, head back up here. Bingo. And we got some nice block lettering here. How are we doing for time? 20 minutes. Okay, I think that's looking pretty, pretty good. Let's uh, just quickly knock a little bit of this E out. So this is a bit tidier. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, cool. Okay, nice. Um, Okay, I like big bats. And now we have to make some decisions about color and stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do is, I think, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave the, the uh, text for a minute. And uh, let's say, you know, this is gonna be a Halloween design. Maybe we wanna do the background of the shirt. We wanna design it for a black shirt, for example. Now, um, Let's make it a little bit lighter so we can see what we're doing. But um, obviously what we've got is black artwork at the moment. So on a black shirt, that's not going to show up. So that's no good. So what do we do? We're going to need to um, change our artwork so that's going to show up. So typically what you'd want to do is maybe um, go for a white. So um, for example, here on this layer, we could... We can make everything white and then it's going to show up nice and clean on a black shirt um, like this. Now that's fine. However, if we were to do that to our bat illustration right here, if we were to make him white, um, it might work, but I don't think it's going to work so great. Um, what you're going to end up with is like a inverted kind of image here. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to make, or I've done this already, we actually made this a reference image and then filled in all the space. So here we've got an example. Uh, this is in orange just to, just to make it obvious, but um, we can fill this in with, with white or even do a uh, extra layer on top, make that a clipping mask and oops. Nope, we'll just, just make it all white. Like that. So, so we've got a nice white looking bat like that, which we can then use. So I think that's gonna be a nicer approach um, for our design. So we've lost, um, if we take away the background here, you can see, hopefully you can see, um, 
if when we go to export this as a PNG now, we don't have our black artwork. We've we've knocked it out, if you like, and we've got just this nice white illustration to work from. So um, if I bring the background back in, we can then, um, especially if we did the same thing over here, if we did a um, clipping mask here and then we made that white. Nope. So we still have a reference layer there. And that would make our text white there. So now we're getting somewhere. Um, Stephanie says, what is the purpose of making a layer a reference layer? Does it change the composition? Uh, when you make a layer a reference layer, like the illustration, what I did was make that a reference layer. It allows you to fill the illustration. So to fill the, you know, like a bucket fill, um, it allows you to drop paint into those spaces on a different layer. So you don't have to drop them on that layer itself. You can create a new layer so that then you can be non-destructive as you're, as you're working through your illustration and everything. So, um, so here we've got our design is coming together. Uh, for the sake of time, I have um, done a, a little bit of a, just a basic font. So I've not hand lettered this. Um, but you can see here we've got the and I cannot lie. And we can just kind of position that where we think best. And I think what it needs really is a little bit more attention um, to detail to give this a bit more of a um, maybe a bit of an effect. We can do some, some brushes from the Freestyler brush set. So, for example, uh, we might want to use... Uh, the confetti one, confetti brush, and then we can go over to the um, layer here and we can start doing some, whoa, why is that orange? I guess that thing's there. Okay, tell you what, undo that, undo that. Let's do a new layer. Or in fact, here we go. So now we can do a little bit of texture here. This is with the confetti brush. And this can just add a little bit more kind of detail. I can just kind of dot this all around. This will just kind of give it a bit more of a kind of weathered effect or a bit of texture. Obviously not going too crazy here, but then where there's a bit more, you can maybe do a bit more shading down here. Or if I want something with a bit more control, the Milky Way brush is a bit more kind of, um, more specific. So we can kind of come in here and do a few more bits there. So just kind of touching up the illustration, just making it kind of, you know, pop out a bit more and stand out nice and clear. And then I think what I'll do is something similar with our text. So here we can do the same, do a mask, and then we can start doing a bit of confetti brush. Don't know whether you can see this, but basically we're adding a little bit of little bit of effects to the text just to kind of take it up a layer, make it look a bit worn and a bit kind of, you know, a bit of attention to detail there on some of it. And just to break it up a bit so we're not got, you know, massive solid blocks of color or whatever. And we can do the same over here um, for our text down here, just do a bit of hand hand weathering and for I like as well. Where's I like there? So again here, I'm just doing a mask. Am I? Oh, we've run out of space, I think. Need to delete some layers here. Just making these a mask and then I can go in and non-destructively add a bit of 
a bit of texture to my to my design. So um, we got a couple of issues here. We got um, over here. We could do with using the the mask on the illustration to knock out here, so we can see that bit. You could also do here is um, we can use a mask just to make that B pop out. And maybe we could do the same just on that little bit of the S, just so that is nice and clear. So I um, think we're getting there. What are we doing for time here? 15 minutes. OK. So I know this is not perhaps the world's best design, but uh, we've got the idea communicated pretty clearly. We've got a nice illustration. I think what we could do with just to kind of tie it together as we've got about, what, 15 minutes here. Um, I think what we should do um, is give it a little bit of background elements to bring it bring it together. So if we do, um, let's do a, oh, we're running out of, whoops. Running out of layers here, but um, what we can do is uh, we can do some little bats, bats in the background, just to try and uh, pad things out a bit. So. Again, if you had more time, you could make yourself some nice little bat silhouettes and reuse them. But for sake of time, I'm just going to uh, just make my own. Do some little bat shapes like this. And up here as well. Oops. And this is just going to, you know, fill out a bit of that space behind. And we also have, um, as part of the Freestyler kit, we have these wonderful little stars that Ian's included. So they can really help uh, fill in a bit of the dead space as well. Make it look like nighttime. You could add a little moon if you wanted or something like that. So... You know, you might want to take a bit more time than I'm doing on this just to try and, you know, produce a nice balanced composition. Um, I'm not sure about those ones right at the top, but you get the idea. We're just trying to pad it out a little bit um, and give it a bit more to work with. And then... Yeah, I think that's pretty much there. And I think this is a design that could appeal, you know, to for Halloween. Works in black and white, as Stephanie says, just works as it is. We can make this background now. We can make this completely black so that it really pops. Um, and obviously you could you could go in and add a color, you could chain, you could play around with color and see what works, but I think it, it works as it is. And it would also work on a, you know doesn't have to be on a black shirt. We could make it, uh, you know, like a gray, heather gray. It would, it would still work. Uh, what it won't work on, obviously, is like a white shirt, but it would work on, you know, black, navy blue, something like that over here. Um, so, yeah, we've got some, some options there, of course, on what to sell it on. And it's a nice, coherent design. And, uh, and yeah, it looks good. So uh, a couple of questions here that I've not got to. While we uh, bring it in for a landing, Mutant Chisel says, um, Jenny from Seattle, is the Ideas Workshop going to be opening up anytime soon? I love the design. Sir Mix a lot is my neighbor. Awesome. That is cool. Um, uh, Jenny, if you drop me an email, um, I do have a, a, there's a secret way to get in the Ideas Workshop this week. Um, 
I don't want to say anything else, <laughs> but the doors are closed to the general public. But if you drop me an email, um, I can hook you up uh, with a link um, that will get you in it this week. The doors close on, on Sunday, but that's not a, a general public um, opening at the moment. Um, so yeah, michael at michaelessig.com if you want to drop me an email about the uh, secret link for the ideas workshop. Um, Stephanie says it works in black and white. Thank you. Tracy says, uh, you're lucky I only have four layers to work with at that size on my iPad. Okay, yeah, this is the iPad Pro, but it's a very old one. Um, I think a 2018 one or something like that. Um, so yeah. And Holloway says the end product works. Uh, there was one more thing that I wanted to, to do. Um, so I like designs like this. I like ideas like this where you especially, so this is obviously using a uh, song lyric or a rap lyric. I like big bats and I cannot lie instead of I like big butts and I cannot lie. I like designs like that. Whenever you can, because um, with, with song lyrics, people can sing the design, right? They can sing the phrase. So, you could, you know, people will be singing, I like big bats and I cannot lie. And uh, the other thing that leads on to sometimes is you could have like another, you know, the next line of the song or something. So I forgot to ask people to kind of brainstorm ideas around this. But I did come up with one, which would be a continuation. And it just, I don't know, you know, maybe some people think it's uh, a bit overkill. Um, but I will get it in position and then I will uh, share my share what I came up with. So maybe you can try and guess what I came up with. But I like big bats and I cannot lie. Bum, 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 bum. You know, you other brothers can't deny. But we want to do something bat related with it. So what could you do? You other brothers can't deny, but we want it to have an extra line for our design here about bats. Um, I'll give you a couple of seconds uh, while I get this ready. Um, and I'll see if anyone comes up with anything, anything like what I did. Um, Sean Aid says, what format are you saving this in? So you can export this as a, uh, you can share this as a PNG and it would export it there and um, you would be able to export that straight away and you could upload that. Uh, positionally, I would, I would move the whole, the whole design up a bit on the canvas. This is probably a bit low, um, but you can export this as a PNG straight from Procreate and then upload that uh, straight away. So hope that makes sense. Uh, Windsorpedia, I was late to the video, but seeing that design come up on screen genuinely made me lol. We'll have to watch the rerun. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Windsorpedia. I'm glad you like it. Um, uh, Stephanie says she made a great one for pumpkins. Jess says, wouldn't song lyrics be part of copyright? Um, not with a case like this, because we're doing something very transformative, um, truly transformative, because uh, we've changed, obviously, the lyrics, and we've produced a whole design, and we've changed the meaning of the of the lyrics. Like, certainly, if you wrote, I like big butts, and I cannot lie in a t-shirt, and that's all you did, that's not, you know, that would be copyright infringement, or potentially. Um, what we've done is, is fairly different. Um, we've transformed it. So I wouldn't worry about that in a case like this. Um, Okay, so my idea, let's see if this works. So I like big bats and I cannot lie. You other mammals cannot fly. So that's what I came up with. Um, maybe a bit overkill, but I think that's the kind of thing that people like. You know, you can see that being shared on social media. You can see people enjoying that. Um, bats are actually the only true flying mammal. Did you know that? So there you go. I had to look that up, but that's how I came up with my... Uh, my last little bit. So, whoops, I like big bats and I cannot lie. You other mammals cannot fly. And uh, just to complete the design, let's just quickly use our confetti brush just to get a bit of texture on this thing on the bottom here, just to tie it all together. So there we go. Um, don't necessarily need that last little line. You can take it or leave it. Um, but I think it's a, you know, why not? It's a nice little bit of fun. So there's our design. I like big bats and I cannot lie. You other mammals cannot fly. And uh, there's the process. We've got it under one hour. Um, and if we do a quick 
do a little quick time-lapse replay. We can watch my whole process here for this one. And while you do, I'll remind you, I used uh, Ian Barnard's uh, brush kit, freestyler brush kit, and obviously his letter space, letter grids uh, to do the lettering. I uh, don't think I did a great job on the lettering compared to Ian last week, but um, but yeah, you can see the approach I took. And uh, obviously, I walked you through where I came up with the idea. So using the ideas workshop software, using plugin phrases, I was able to come up with this idea. It jumped out at me. I thought it was funny. It lends itself to you know, T-shirts for a number of reasons. It's a relatively short phrase. It's uh, lyrical, so people can kind of sing it to themselves, which makes it spread easily. And uh, we've got a nice little last line as well. You other mammals cannot fly. Just to top it all off, the cherry on top. Tracy says keywords. Um, one thing I would definitely say about keywords is, because I'm not like a big bat expert or anything, not like a big bat guy, um, go and do a bit of research on bats um, because that would be my, obviously beyond like the obvious stuff of Halloween and bats, you know, you might want to dive into different kinds of bats, fruit bats and what other kind of bats there are, I don't know. But um, what I do like to do is go on Wikipedia, pull up something about my subject, and then just kind of scroll through and look out for keywords or things that I don't know. Um, and there'll be words in there that you don't recognize, and you can just pull those out and be like, okay, that would be maybe a good keyword, because I can guarantee, let's just do a quick, uh, a quick attempt at this. Um, if I do a Wikipedia search for bats, um, then, um, you know, you're going to find things like their technical name, their Latin name. Um, you, if you read through, obviously this is a, oh, you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm looking at the Wikipedia entry for bats. Um, but you'll find all kinds of information about bats. And um, I find that's a, you know, I, I can find, I can see here we got different types of bats. We got mouse-tailed bats, hog-nosed bats, uh, false vampires, horseshoe bats, Um so, yeah, I just find, you know, even taking a few seconds to just kind of scroll through and, and get a bit more information about your topic um, can lead you to some good keywords. Or, for example, like who would be into bats? What's, you know, is it a biologist? Would it be, I don't know, a zookeeper? Is there a particular name for someone who studies bats? Uh, where are bats? You know, where do they live? What countries do they live in? All those kind of questions you can ask yourself to try and, you know, spur some ideas. Um, but obviously, it's not a case of there being any perfect keyword that's going to make this design sell. And obviously, the key with this design is that it's funny, which means that hopefully we don't need um, keywords necessarily. Of course, we need keywords, but um, people will share it. People will, you know, like it. It will spread. It could spread, you know, virally, naturally um, through word of mouth. And it could be sold. It could be submitted and selected for sites like Threadless and T Fury and and licensing options and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Lance says, this was great. Would love to see more of these types of live design creations. Thank you, Lance. Um, um, old Haggis got it. Had to read it out loud. Yeah. Uh, Tracy says, great idea that bat lovers would find it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, um, great. We came in under an hour. So, thank you for joining me. I hope that was helpful. I will be posting this one to my Instagram. I might tidy it up a little bit. Um, but I hope that was a helpful session. And uh, let's just hit the replay again so you can kind of watch the process while I'm talking. Um, if you want to get free goodies from me, michaelessick.com forward slash live right there. You can see the URL. And um, if you want the brushes, you can find the links in the description. If you're interested in the ideas workshop, um, there's a link below. But we are closed at the moment. Um, there is a secret link if you want to email me, but um, I'll leave that there. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this today. There will be no live stream next week. I am taking a break from live streaming to focus on some stuff for the Ideas Workshop. So um, so yeah, there won't be a live stream next week, but I will be sending out an email on Tuesday as usual. So if you want tips and tricks from me, sign up at michaelassic.com forward slash live. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. Um, a few nice comments here. Uh, Olivia says, another awesome live. Thank you. No problem. Amira says, very informative. Thank you, Johnette. And you other bats can't deny. Yeah, I like big bats and I cannot lie. And you other bats can't deny. Hmm. I think I prefer you other mammals cannot fly. But 
um, but still good. Uh, Bo, wonderful session. Thanks, Michael. AJ says, when I vectorize in Illustrator, I always end up with thin white lines between uh, between each color. Usually coloring in behind the art with white or black fixes issue. Any idea how to avoid this? Sorry, AJ, I'm not, um, I'm not much of an Illustrator user anymore these days. Um, but I'm sure there must be a fix. Um, I, would I would try Googling it or, or trying to get yourself into an Illustrator Facebook group or something where you can find an expert. Um, Nomadic, have you ever ordered a demo shirt from Printful or print, uh, Printify or Printful before you made your T-shirt? Yes, I recommend doing that, certainly. If you're going to be selling on Etsy or, or your own Shopify, you want to check the quality, you want to see the packaging, definitely order samples, and you can get uh, discounts on on sample orders with Printful, definitely. Um, I think I've got a blog post about that if you want to check that out as well. Uh, Stephanie says, thanks for sharing. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Victoria. Thank you, Beverly. Thank you, Dusika and Grey Elephant Club. And Andre um, says, overfilling. That might be an answer about the, the Illustrator thing. All right. Uh, thank you guys for joining me. MichaelEssig.com forward slash live if you want to sign up to my free email newsletter. And um, I will see you all maybe in a couple of weeks' time, but in your inboxes next week. So hope you enjoyed it today. Uh, thanks for joining me. Hope you like the design and uh, talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.